Horn and Diesel. You have a good weekend? We didn't film a vlog yesterday, so did you miss me? No? Fine. So we're in Salisbury, New Brunswick. We're headed up to Inkerman, up in northern New Brunswick. We're gonna pick up a load and that load is going down to South Carolina, USA. So we got some miles ahead of us, it looks good. From there, I'm gonna put in a request that I'd like to head towards Western Canada, maybe get home. We'll see if they can uh, find something like that for me. Maybe they gotta send me up to Ontario and then home. Uh, I need to be home before the 15th, for sure, before the 15th. I have to have a, a physical done this year. Every five years, as a class one commercial driver, you gotta get your physical done and pass a physical by the doctor so that you can continue driving your truck. Otherwise, they'll take your license away if you're not physically good enough to drive your truck, right? So I gotta go do that this month, before the end of the month. First thing when we get back on the road here is the scale of two kilometers. I think these are the good kind of scales too, yeah. I, I've only seen them in Canada, in the Maritimes, where you drive over a preliminary scale at highway speed, like right on the highway here, and then a, a sign will light up whether or not they want you to pull into the scale or not. Which is interesting, I've seen that in the States before, but this is the only place in Canada that I've seen it. It's just coming up here on our right. All trucks have to be in this lane right now, and you'll see it right at those two posts. We're gonna go right between them. On the ground, you'll see the little scale there. Here it comes. Right here. Yep, yep. And then these signs recognize whether or not they wanna see me or not in the scale. Nothing lit up, so that means that they're closed or they just don't want to see me. Which sort of makes sense because I'm empty. Hey, Diesel. You weren't on my seat, were you? I saw some extra hairs on my seat there. You have your own seat, buddy, with a seat cover. Okay, we got our Tim Hortons. Got a chicken croissant sandwich and some... Chicken, no, potato wedges, chicken wedges. Potato wedges, and of course, the classic large coffee, three cream and a shot of espresso. I've been adding an extra cream. I used to do two cream in my large coffees. I've added an extra one for the only purpose really that it cools down the coffee a little bit faster and I can drink it sooner. I don't like scalding hot coffee. So if I put three cream in there at Tim Hortons, it seems to cool it down just right that I can drink it in about 10 minutes personal preference, I guess. I don't put any sugar in my coffee, though. I don't want to ruin it. I just want to say, you're a very good boy, Diesel. Good boy. Thanks, man. What do you want, man? No, you don't just say that stuff for fun. What do you want? I just want to call you a good boy. What's wrong with that? I'm just going to pull out of the Miramichi Irving again. We were here twice already in the last week. There's a Tim Hortons right next door, so it attracts people like me. You put a Timmy's next door, you're gonna have business. All right, we've got a little further north to go yet. So I'm gonna turn left. Go over their big fancy bridge here in town and continue on our way to pick up our freight. Got here to where we're gonna be loading. Signed myself in, wearing my special worker's tux. And 
I don't want to get this sweater dirty. My other sweater, my work sweater is drying right now. So actually, I don't want to get this sweater dirty. This is my good one. This sweater is so comfortable. One second, put that over there. Wait while I strip for you on camera. There you go. That should get the views. <laughs> right, as everyone's clicking away. No, don't take any more off. Don't worry, I'm stopping at this. I'm stopping at this. One second, one second. Put this back here. As soon as I get out of the truck, I have to put my worker's tux on, like I was saying. And uh, we'll be getting loaded and going down to Anderson, South Carolina. I haven't figured out how far away that is from here yet. I have no data here, apparently, on my phone. So we just got loaded. It took them about an hour and a half since I got here to get me loaded and going. So that's actually pretty good for this place. Sometimes I got to sit here for, oh, hours and hours and sometimes overnight until they load me the next morning. So this is pretty good. So I'm just sending in a message right now telling everybody that, hey, I'm loaded. I am on the roll. We're going to chain, uh, cross over from Canada and Woodstock, New Brunswick into the United States at Holton, Maine and then make our way down the east coast towards Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, here it says we have 2,718 kilometers. I'm just gonna figure out the miles for you. Let me get my trusty calculatory device. Put my pillow up there, that's mine. Oh, hey, easy there. That's how things get broken. Okay, calculatory device never lies. 2,718 kilometers divided by 1.61. We're looking at 1,688 miles to our destination. It's a miserable, miserable day out here. I do have a question for the locals here, those of you who live in this area of the world. I'm talking like northern New Brunswick, northeast New Brunswick right now specifically. Do you guys ever have good weather? This is a serious question because every other time I come here, there's either like 10 feet of snow or it's miserable raining and cold. <laughs> Just wondering, do you guys ever see the sun here? I've never seen the sun here. I don't know, I can't remember. Maybe I have, I don't remember. Like what a miserable, miserable climate, eh? And it's cold out too, like this falling down in front of you here, it looks like rain because it melts right away, but it's actually snow. There's snow in there, it's sort of frosty, like a frosty rain. Maybe not quite snow, but pretty close. It's cold enough for it. Getting very close to Moncton, New Brunswick again. Five kilometers or three miles. And we'll be turning on to Road 11. That'll take us down to the Trans-Canada. I want to get into Maine, USA tonight yet. Sleep in America. And I'd like to go another five hours if possible. That'd be perfect, because then I can get down to South Carolina in the next two days and I'm actually way ahead of schedule for when I put my ETA as. We'll see what happens though. I always like to give myself a little bit of extra time just in case. I'd rather be early than late. Nobody likes it when you're late but nobody usually minds if you're early. Sometimes they do though. It's ridiculous. Sometimes you get there early they get all mad at you. What are you doing here? It's usually at places where they don't have room for you to park. You gotta be right on time. Not a minute late. Not more than like 15 minutes early. Just arrived back here to uh, the Petro Canada. We're just exiting off Trans Canada to get to the Petro Canada. That was confusing. I'm gonna stop here, make some food for myself, take a little breather, and figure out how far away we are from Maine. Mandy's about to yell at me. Why did you go off route? I didn't tell you to turn. Do what I say. figure out where I am. I just passed Esso Card Log. It's called Key to the Highway. And I think I'm going to stay there for the night. I'm going to double back and go back another mile, the last exit, and uh, park there for the night. I can pretty much get to my destination from where I am right now 
in two days. So we should be fine. As long as we don't hit any like huge accidents or something, let's hope not. That's always tragic when that happens. Uh, but let's head on back there. Park, figure what we're gonna do from there. Wow. <laughs> Sudden cloud burst. I didn't even go half a mile back and I just got nailed with this rain. It must've been just right behind me before. Because we're just going the opposite way right now, right? Just backtracking to the truck stop. Just getting pummeled here. Oh, it's slowing down again. Oh, that's strange. Huh. And just like that, it's just like sprinkling again. Okay, just exited exit 312 on the Trans Canada here. Just a little bit away from Woodstock, New Brunswick. Here's an SU truck stop right here on our right. I wonder if we have any room to park in here. Why is there a new parking sign? This is a truck stop. I don't know if you know this or not, but we park at truck stops. See if I can find a truck parking spot here. Look at all these guys taking up all the space. Hmm, if I can't find anything, I might have to go into the States. Oh, wait, wait, there's room, there's room. Oh, I can even nose right in there. I'm gonna nose in beside this guy. He's not parked straight. I'm gonna park along with all these guys. Right like this. He's not parked straight on the right. I'm parking straight. Nosed in like a boss. Now we gotta do the test. We gotta shut everything off and see how noisy our neighbors are. See if we need to find a different place to park or not. I hear a reefer somewhere. Yeah, this guy beside me, he's got a reefer. He's got one of those container reefers. So it's like underneath the trailer or something. I'm gonna have to go investigate this. You see my neighbor right beneath there? That's his reefer, it's like a container truck. That little box under his trailer, that's a motor. That little box is almost right beside my sleeper here. And there was other spots available, so that means we're gonna go find a different spot to park. All right, let's get out of here. Easily stay down. If I have a choice, I'll always park somewhere quieter. I think everyone can agree with me on that one. Back out of our spot here. We'll find somewhere quiet. That guy's way too noisy. All right, let's do the test again. We're in a new spot. guy's got his brights on coming into the parking lot here. I think this is a much quieter spot. I hear the guy behind me. His truck is one of those trucks that idles with his turbo wound all the way up. So it's idling and it's like I just want a quiet spot to sleep. That's all I want. Is that too much to ask, Diesel? I know it's not always possible to have a quiet night. I'm a truck driver. You park at a truck stop, there's always going to be, uh, you know, noises, trucks idling, stuff like that. Uh, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is like inconsistent noises, like uh, reefers starting and stopping consistently, uh, obnoxiously loud APUs that start and stop consistently. Like it's different if it's just a consistent sound, but if it keeps starting and stopping, starting and stopping, that's bothersome uh, at night for some people, depending on how tired I am. But another thing like this one truck, oh, we just left. Oh, he was idling his truck and you know, a turbo was whistling. Very often I uh, come across a truck stop and I realize that the temperature outside is just perfect, right? You could sleep outside in the grass and be totally comfortable. Maybe in a tent if you're a little more civilized. And you just sleep in a tent, sleep with all the windows and vents open in your truck, whatever. It's just a beautiful, perfect night, right? And you walk through the truck stop and half the trucks are at high idle, just wah, idling. I talked to one driver once, and I, I just wanted to know why. I was like, "Hey, man, it's like a perfect night outside. Like, 
You're not worried about wasting fuel? And of course he has the thing. He comes back with the classic comeback. Hmm, smell my fuel. See, if you were my employee, I would be like, but I didn't know. I don't even remember who he worked for, whatnot, but that's not the point. Uh, the point is that uh, on perfect nights, it boggles my mind sometimes why people are idling their trucks all night through a perfect night like tonight. Like I'm gonna open up the windows here. That's why I was trying to find a quieter spot, right? Cause there's people like over half the trucks here idling their trucks. I just don't understand that. Maybe they need to have it just the perfect temperature to sleep. I don't know. I guess I can't judge them in their sleeping patterns. I'm just thinking like, wouldn't you want to save the fuel? Wouldn't you want to, you know, I don't know. So this is my tip and advice to you new drivers out there. If the weather is perfect outside, it's beautiful. You think you could sleep in a tent and be pretty comfortable. Don't idle your truck, open your windows, open your vents and just sleep, you know, save the fuel. It's up to you. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm telling you what I do. I never idle this truck through the night ever, even in winter time. The only time I'll idle this truck through the night is if it's like below minus 30 degrees and it's freezing. And that's the only way I can keep my engine from actually freezing solid because then I can't start it in the morning, right? And I'll still shut it off for about four hours. Oh, depending on how cold it is again, right? Because you don't want to shut it off and start it, shut it off and start it. That creates a lot of condensation, condensation in your fuel system and then your fuel might gel. That's another whole issue we can talk about once winter time comes around. I've been babbling here for a while. You guys are probably all sick and tired of hearing me talk already. Diesel, you beautiful furry thing. I don't know what that means. Diesel, hey. Hey. You're on camera, man. Everyone's watching you. Oh, look at the little tail. Yeah, I like it when they watch me. Yeah. I'm a star, man. Are you too lazy to lift your head or what? Yeah? If you're being lazy, wag your tail. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there it is. There it is. He's not getting up, I guess. He's not getting up. But anyways, I'm going to go and join him. Uh, except I'm going to go sleep back there. He can keep sleeping there if he wants to. Okay. Time for bed. Thanks for watching today. Uh, today I didn't get as much filming done as I probably wanted to, but... Uh, Another guy came in here with his high beams on. I don't know about you, but I turn my high beams off before I enter a parking lot where drivers are sleeping. I'm a rare person, I know. Oh, I need to go to bed. I'm getting whiny. Diesel. Time for bed. Sort of way ahead of me. Okay, tomorrow. New vlog, we're gonna be crossing into the United States of America tomorrow. I hope you join me, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's always fun going to visit the States. I'll be driving all the way down the East Coast towards South Carolina. And if we're lucky, we might see some palm trees. So tune in. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new, uh, down below in the description, there's a whole pile of links to past vlogs of mine. Get to know me better. If this is your first vlog that you've watched of me, you don't know who I am, hey, there's a whole bunch of vlogs down below. You can get to know me. There's all my social media down below as well. Get to know me. Join the crew. We'd love to have you bored every day. I make a new video every single day. I skip one here and there. Yesterday, there was no vlog. Hey, everybody needs a break. See you tomorrow, guys. I got to end this vlog. I'm just babbling.